How's it going everybody? In this video we are going to start taking a look at trunking using both .1Q and ISL encapsulation processes. Now when it comes to trunking, if you're not familiar with this already, that's okay. Because trunking is a, it's a pretty basic concept for most people out there. The, uh, the idea here is if I have two switches with the connection in between them, uh, whether that's a fiber optic cable, an ethernet cable, or what have you, um, the trunk allows VLAN 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. to cross that link. Now an access port, which is what we talked about in the previous video um, in iOS and on Nexus, allows us to place a port in a VLAN. Right? So you're not putting the VLAN on the port, you're placing the port in the VLAN. I know it's a little, the, the logic can be a little goofy, but that's pretty much what it's doing. Where with the trunk, you're allowing more than one VLAN to traverse that trunk link. So if you've got one VLAN, you really don't need a trunk link, uh, but it's important to still configure one anyway, just in case you do you decide to scale. Um, where in cases where you have you know multiple VLANs, you're definitely going to want to have trunk links in between them and you know go from there. So trunking itself is actually a very very easy topic to break down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, a breakdown to how this would look from a logical perspective. You know, from a physical cabling perspective. You know, how does this come into play and why would I need to know about it? And then we'll take a look at some of the frame headers and, and then we'll get some uh, configuration going between the switches so that we know what's where and why we would need it, uh, things in different areas. Now, one of the things I want to point out is on Nexus, dot um, 1Q is the only trunking encapsulation that is supported. Now, there is the term ISL in Nexus, but this is known as the inter-switch link, which is the connection between two Nexus switches. So now I want to preface this too, I am not a Nexus expert. I don't know everything about the platform. Nexus does a lot more than what your normal campus LAN or your core LAN switch will do, like a 6500. Nexus does a lot more than that, because you can use Nexus as both your data center edge and your LAN edge, and you can basically bring those two together to be on the same wire, which is they, what they commonly refer to as the unified, unified fabric. So the idea with this, or UF, however you want to look at it, those are aspects that um, are specific to Nexus, where you can use like fiber channel over Ethernet, and you know have what they call a converged network adapter, where you're running both the LAN and the SAN traffic over the same wire. So we're not going to get into that right now, but I just wanted you to be aware of just some of the basic terminologies that are out there for it. So if we go back to our original switch uh, switch overview video, we had a host here, you know, host one, and he's just hanging on the network, you know, as he's been. And then we have a switch sitting here. And then we have, uh, you know, host two sitting here. And these guys are connected to the network as such. And then this guy is just hanging out doing his thing, you know, enjoying the life. Comes over, we have another switch over here, and we have this guy sitting here doing his thing, and then we have the router sitting over here, and then you have the, the internet cloud doing whatever it's doing all day long. So we have switch one, we have switch two. Okay, that's a horrible W. There we go. So now what we're going to do is when I have traffic here, we'll say this guy is VLAN 10, this guy is VLAN 10. This guy's VLAN, um, this guy's VLAN 10. You know, they're all in the same VLAN, right? Well, the way that this is going to work out is if I am here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have MAC address A and I'm going to be host 1. I'm going to have MAC address B and I'm going to be host 2. I'm going to have MAC address C and I'm going to be host 3, right? I don't know. For whatever reason, and I don't know why, my pen pad, I have a hard time. Like when I do that, um, the threes always come out goofy. They always come out like that. Well, they always come out weird. Anyway, I'm not sure why, but they do. Um, so if I'm set up like this, what I'm going to learn here is I have, let's assume this is port 1, this is port 2, this is port port 10. And then we have uh, port 24 on this side and port 24 on this side are the trunk links. Or it's a trunk link, it's a single connection. I don't want to gum up the diagram with uh, trunk links uh, so, because we're not on Spanish tree yet. 
So if I'm here, I'm going to build the CAM table, the content addressable memory, the CAM table. I'm going to say on port 1, I'm going to learn MAC address A, right? On port 2, I'm going to learn MAC address B. On this particular case, in order for this to work, I'm going to have port uh, 24 is going to be advertising to me C, right? And the same thing over here. I'm going to be learning um, on port 10, I have MAC address C. On 24, I have A. And 24, I have B, right? That's going to be how the CAM tables are going to be built out. So if any one of these devices need to be able to talk to any of the other devices, they're all the same VLAN, they're all the same layer 2 domain. So therefore, he's going to be able to traverse between the switches via the trunk link here in the middle. Now, this is where I want to focus is the trunk link. There are two different encapsulation methods. We have the dot one q, also known as 802.1q. It's a tag. This is a four byte header that is inserted just after the source uh, and destination um, information inside the layer two frame. And then what is inserted is you have this little four byte frame. This guy right here is injected right in here, just just in front of the type and length value field inside the layer two header. You also have inter switch link or ISL. This is not doesn't have a uh, standard associated to it because of the fact that it's not a, an actual standard. It's just a, it's Cisco proprietary. So one of the things that is done here is this is a 26 or I'm sorry a 30 byte uh, encapsulation. So what this does is you got a 26 byte header and a 4 byte tr uh, trailer, right? So that's going to be how they bro they break it up. Now the key thing that's important to understand here is if you have your data frame like this right here, the 26 byte header is going to go here. So this is your header. This is your 4 byte trailer. Right, that's going to be where that information is applied to. Your data is in between them. Where dot1q doesn't do that. Dot1q takes that data, and you have the uh, the layer two frame, and you are going to have the FCS at the end, which is actually rewritten once the uh, the dot1q tag is added. So you have your source and you have your destination address. Right, those are two different fields inside the layer two header. And then what ends up happening is right here, you have your uh, your dot one q tag added to it. Now this is going to have four bytes. So you will commonly see fifteen oh four. If you're going to do any like what they call dot one q tunneling, then you're going to need to include increase the system uh, MTU to fifteen oh four. We'll talk about that later on. But the idea here is you're going to be adding four bytes of encapsulation into the already existing layer two header. So you're going to be adding that, and that's going to tell us a couple things. It's going to say the um, there's going to be the TPID or the uh, the uh, the protocol ID. This basically is saying this is a dot one q frame. You also have other aspects like you have the uh, the class of service field or the priority. You have a field in here, uh, it's a one, this is three bits, this is two bytes. It has to be for the, uh, the signaling. And then you have one bit for the explicit congestion notification. Now what this basically means is if your network is extremely congested, you can use the ECN frame, or the bit, turn this on one, it turns it on, Zero means it's off. I can use that for that bit to signal to the network that this particular connection is congested. Therefore, I can try to avoid it. And then you have your 12 bytes of um, your VLAN ID. So if you add these all up, you've got 12 and 1 is 13 and 3 is 16 and 16 and 16 is uh, 32. So 32 divided by 4 is 8 which gives you, you have a four byte field. 
So it's not very large, but it's broken down into several different aspects. So once you understand that part, you're in really, really good shape. Now, the, where this comes into play is you would set the encapsulation here at the interface level. And you could do this on a per link basis. So I could be running uh, .1Q here, and I could be running ISL up here between these two links, or between on this link. So this one could be running ISL, this one could be running .1Q, and everybody's happy. You're still going to forward traffic back and forth because as long as the encapsulations match on this side and over here, you're in that much better off. Uh, that much better off. So that is going to be one of the reasons why it's important to make sure that they, they match. One of the things that you'll commonly see, um, uh, well actually I shouldn't say that. It's something that you potentially might see in troubleshooting where they have a mismatch. You know, it's possible that they throw something like that at you or, you know, uh, the VLAN, the native VLANs are uh, improperly set up or something like that. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, I'm actually going to have a different video to talk about the native VLAN because it is a not a difficult concept to understand, but it's one of those things where I feel like it really needs its own set of time to work on. So when you're setting this stuff up, it's actually pretty simple to get it operational. So let's go. And, we're going to go ahead and go take a look at a couple of web pages here that actually have the uh, this is drawn out for any of you that are interested in seeing it. So here on Cisco's site, we have the this page right here, which I'm going to scroll in just a little bit here for you. We have the, this is the ISL frame. So you have the ISL header. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my pen tool here and draw on this. You have the ISL header, which is this section right here. The header is placed in front of the encapsulation that you're going to be trying to encapsulate. And then beyond that, you have the the, uh, the FCS back here to make sure everything is still copacetic. So right here, everything in red is ISL framing. Everything in here is, dot one Q, is the actual data payload that you're trying to send across the wire. So this is the data. So once you get that part knocked out and you understand that, you're in that much better off. You're that you're pretty good shape at that point. So you take that into consideration. Go ahead and clear the screen. Now you have several different framings. And, uh, 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 there's framing information for ISL. Now, in my opinion, and I don't know how much they're going to test you on in CCP version two switch, but um, I would be familiar with this capability. But Configuration of it is pretty simple. Just remember that there's a 26 byte header and a 4 byte trailer, and it encapsulates the entire frame. If you know that, you should be in pretty good shape for the most part. And then if we come down here, we'll talk about some of the. Um, I'll actually include this link in the. Um, actually, if you were to just Google, um, where is it? I think it's right here. Just the. I simply looked up the. ISL and .1Q frame formats, and I was brought immediately to this page. So um, I would definitely do that, and it's going to give you a lot of flexibility on seeing exactly how that works and stuff like that. So, um, so there's a little bit of a backstory behind it. Uh, ISL is a Cisco proprietary protocol, and ISL provides VLAN trunking capabilities while it maintains full wire speed performance on Ethernet links in full duplex or half duplex mode. Um, and it can support up to a thousand VLANs. Um, uh, let's see. ISL uses per VLAN spanetry or PBST, uh, which you could use a root bridge with, which we'll talk, be talking about dot, uh, spanetry later on. So where dot one Q supports up to four thousand ninety six VLANs and um, has a four byte tag that is inserted inside of the original frame. And you basically are going to be um, signaling with that. So obviously, there, there's a big thing right there. ISL doesn't have the capability of scaling. You know, a thousand VLANs. I could set, I could see a company using a thousand VLANs, easy. Um, but that's local to that switch, though. It's not company wide. So if you have multiple switches and you're using, and those switches aren't connected to each other in some sort of broadcast domain style connectivity then you're really not going to be hitting that limit. It's when you have a situation where you've got the same layer two broadcast domain 
and you got the same switches supporting the same VLANs and supporting the same MAC address tables, that's when you get into a scaling limitation. But in most cases, you're not going to see that many VLANs. I'm not saying you wouldn't see a high density of VLANs, maybe two or three hundred of them. That's potential. But that's probably going to be in a, in a single office, but probably not likely in the same uh, broadcast domain, in the same switch stack. You're probably going to see multiple stacks and broken out, and you're probably and likely going to see a layer 3 intersection between the layer 2 network and the layer 3 network that you're going to route via. So that's usually what ends up happening. So I would go through here and check this out. We're going to take a look at um, one of the things that's kind of cool about ISL that uh, .1Q has as well is the ability to signal priority of forwarding. So it can actually signal and say, hey, I need to send this, this particular frame faster than that particular frame. And then we come down here to the bottom where we have the um, .1Q. Now as you can see, .1Q you have the destination and the source and then you have the type and length, you insert the tag right in here. So the tag is inserted right there. And then once that's there, I'm going to have to go back over here, um, break this out here, you have a couple things. And I want to be very clear here on how this stuff, now this is a very old document. This is from 2006. It's 2016 now, so this document is 10 years old. So this guy right here, that bit's still there, but it's got a different name. It's actually the the explicit congestion notification. It's no longer the CFI or the can, canonical framing indicator. I think is what it stands for. So you have your topology ID. All this simply does is it tries to signal with what they call an ether type field, which I will bring this down just a bit so you guys can see what this looks like. This right here is referred to, and let me see if I can zoom out just a bit. Yes. One more. There we go. So now, the way this works out here is this, t this tag protocol identification, this guy right here, this, right, this, in, this thing right here, this is what they commonly refer to as the ether type. The ether type is always going to be a hex value that signals the layer, the upper layer protocols. What is the next layer going to be doing? Is this an IP packet? Is this ICMP? You know, what is it? In this case, right here, 8100 indicates that this is a .1Q tagged frame. So I have that, and you have the three bits of priority. So uh, refers to the .1P. .1P is very common inside of Cisco phones. So if you have a Cisco phone, you know, I'm a, I'm a horrible drawer, so I'm just going to draw this. This guy connects up to a switch port, and this particular port is, uh, you've enabled auto QoS or QoS on that. The, frame, the phone is going to send its data up to the phone as .1P. .1P or .1P priority bits. This, these bits right here are only valid to travel across a .1Q tagged Inter interconnection, so like a, you know, a trunk link between two switches. That's a dot one Q trunk. That's the only time this this frame is supported because you can't live outside of a dot one Q header because it's a dot one Q encapsulation. So the idea here is you have uh, this field is three bits, so you have one, two, three. So you have basically a four, two, and one. As you turn bits on, so you have zero, one, two, three. Four, five, six, and seven. So you would turn on one, or I'm sorry, you would do this would be a zero, this would be a one, this would be a two. Go ahead and just draw this out real quick for you. Uh, this would be a uh, zero, one, one, this would be one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. So this would be the whatever binary attribute comes into play with this. This is how this would be uh, basically identifiable to you from a binary perspective. So to understand the decimal value of where everything's at, that would be how you would specify, you know, what the priority bit is. So CS5, this guy right here, this basically is voice over IP, essentially is what that does. This right here, this typically indicates that you've got some sort of control plane, like your 
um, routing protocol or spanning tree messages going back and forth will have an internet. Six is uh, usually referred to as internet. Um, internet priority, which basically means that this is control plane. So you want to make sure that your OSPF hellos or your spanning tree BPDUs are sent out have a higher priority than you know maybe you've got some sort of map mapping in there for web traffic. You know I'd rather wait a couple extra seconds for my web page to pull up than have my OSPF hellos or my spanning tree calculate my spanning tree BPDUs to be dropped, something like that. And then we have the the CFI. This basically means the explicit con, uh, con congestion notification. They have the same thing inside of frame relay with the, what they call the beckon and the fecon, which is the backwards ECN, and you have the forwards ECN. Those are outside of the scope for this particular co uh, course, but these are both layer two signaling techniques for frame relay, where this basically says the connection is um, it's busy, don't send the traffic. The VLAN ID is pretty identical. It should be, um, we've already talked about this when we did VLAN tagging, or I'm sorry, uh, creating a VLAN and then placing an inter interface inside that VLAN, where we did VLAN 10, and then we went through and we said, uh, you know, switch port access VLAN, you know, 10, and there we have it. So that's how you would go about and get that taken care of. So pretty straightforward stuff for the most part. This is the one, dot one q that I would recommend you spend the majority of your time on. You're going to um, likely be seeing this more in production as well as in testing. I can't say for sure because I don't deal with the testing people, but that's just my that's just my opinion on the situation. Uh, although I would know both well. not going to say one is more important than the other because they're both trun trunking encapsulations. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come back over here to our switch setup here, and we're going to go ahead and grab... Um, I'm actually using DTP at the moment. And what we're going to do is, um, I've got DTP enabled. Uh, I'm sorry, I've got DTP debugging. So if I come in here and I do a show debug, you're going to see that I have DTP and I have spanning tree being debugged. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you all here, turn that off. And I'm going to do debug DTP. I'm going to say states and do that and I'm also going to do events and I'm going to say um, I'm not going to worry about spanning tree right now because we're not there yet so right now we have states that's going to be a lot less information to go back and forth so we're going to go ahead and so what this is saying right here is that it's um, from tra starting state transition from uh, access to dynamic trunking for the finite state machine. And so it's one of those things, I haven't actually debugged this in quite some time because I know what's happening from just understanding how the switching operation works. So um, I would definitely check that out if I was you to do a, do a quick debug and the state information. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to global config and I'm gonna type in interface, I'm gonna type in uh, do show interface trunk and you're not going to see anything show up here because I don't have anything explicitly configured as a trunk link. If I do a show interface gig 0 slash 2, you're going to see that, let me go over this up a little bit, that this port right now is configured as, um, it, it actually, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong output. I need to do show interface gig 0 slash 2 switch port. All right, so I'm going to do it this way before I get overrun again. So as you can see right there, this guy right now is he has static access. Now the reason, actually, let me, let me do it this way, you all, before I get bombarded again. What this basically means to you and I, and let me, can I zoom in at all? No, I can't. I'm holding, I'm using a newer uh, version of Secure CRT. You can zoom in on the text. But in this particular version of CRT, you cannot do that. So here, this is what I want to cover with you guys real quick so you guys understand where I'm coming from. So right now, this means right here that the port is enabled as a layer two access or a layer two switch port. Dynamic auto is its administrative mode. Anytime you see administrative, that means how it is configured, right? Why is that not working? 
this means how it's configured. Operational is how it was um, through the order of operations. What is its current mode of operation? So here it's configured to dynamic auto. It's, it's static access, which means it went from ISL to dot one Q to access. Right. So now. DTP is enabled, and how do I know that? It says administrative trunking encapsulation, negotiate. This means dynamic dynamic trunking protocol. So now you can turn this off if you would like, or you can leave it on. It's up to you and how you want to do it. If you type in switch port no negotiate, it disables DTP. Trunking negotiation is on. The operational trunking encapsulation is native. This means it's going to be using a native, actually, I should say that it is native VLAN. We'll talk about that more in detail later. Um, native VLAN mode is one, which is the default. Voice VLAN is none. I don't have a voice VLAN associated to this interface. So, what I'm going to do now, and we're, we haven't talked about private VLAN, so I'm not really going to go any further than that. So, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. And I'm going to go bust in here, and we're going to say that on, I'm going to debug, debug DTP events, and debug, actually, and then go to global config and type in interface gig zero slash, uh, what is it, two? Uh, yes. Two at the moment. Uh, two, we're going to type in, uh, Switch port trunk question mark encapsulation is dot one q. Now right now it's negotiate. Now I can negotiate with it and do that. Or I can say, well, I'm gonna go ahead and say negotiate and I'm but I'm gonna set it up this way. So now we should see um, we go over to what side is that? Switch three. So we're gonna go to switch three. We're going to do a show interface. What connection is that? Gig. Gig one slash two. All right. So um, config t inter. If we type in do show interface trunk, we don't have anything there. Now, if I type in interface um, interface gig one slash two, I type in switch port trunk encapsulation negotiate, and I type in do show interface trunk. We're going to look at do show interface gigs one slash two switch port. And right now it is negotiate static access. Now, if I go in here and if I do a shut, I'm just curious to see what's actually going to happen here. Uh, and then no shut. It should. I'm just curious to see if it's actually going to have any effect. Okay, it did not. So I'm going to have to uh, configure this and I'm going to type in switch port trunk encapsulation is dot one q. Okay, I'm going to go over to switch five and do show interface trunk. All right, so if we take a look at this do show run interface gig zero slash two, it's negotiate, right? Negotiation is auto. Or I'm sorry. That's weird. Why is it doing that? Um, oh, do show interface trunk. I haven't set it to be. Let's do do show interface interface gig zero slash two switch port. It is still trying to form static access. So what I have to do on this side is I have to have a switch port mode is trunk. Okay, so now. It should go through, and on this side, now we have it's the mode is auto, as you can see here, and um, that's good. So we go over here to switch five, and we type in uh, do show interface trunk. Now it's it's on though. The difference between the two on and auto is on is hard coded. Auto means I am doing whatever you're telling me to do. Now, if you ever see the N here, that's gonna there's an N that'll show up in front of the 802.1Q 
portion, and that'll mean that I am a uh, negotiating 802.1q. So that's how you would go about doing that. So on switch 5 here, I can go in here and type in do show run interface gig 0 slash 2, and I am one q and negotiation here. Um, you can disable that by typing a switch port no negotiate, and that will turn off DTP. If we do do show run again, nego uh, negotiation is off. Um, let's see here. If we do this, negotiation is off, and the mode is changed over to. Um, so there we have a DTP event, and then let's see. Is it detecting it? Uh, let me go here and um, debug DTP states. That's going to be a bit more chatty. Alright, so on this side here, I'm going to do the same thing on gig 0 slash 1. So config t interface gig zero slash one. I'm gonna type in switch port trunk encapsulation is uh, negotiate. And on this side, I'm gonna say that if I type in do show CDP neighbor, don't actually have to look at it. I can say um, switch five do one slash three right or two slash zero one slash one. Sorry. Uh, one slash one, which is this guy. Uh, interface gig one slash one. I can type in switch port trunk encapsulation is dot one q, and um, see if, if that makes any difference over here. Let's see. Okay, so it should see. Okay, there we go. Stat okay, so it's transition to static access. It hasn't changed yet. So do show interface trunk. You won't see the second VLAN. Or the same, you won't see that popping up here. We actually have to set it up here. Do show interface gig zero slash one switch port. He's still configured to then Mikado and he's set up there. If we come over here and we state on this side that if we come in here we do a uh, switch port mode is uh, trunk. Or if we do Let's, let's do dynamic. I'm just curious. It's been a while since I've touched that one. Dynamic desirable. Let's see what this one says. Okay, so... Okay, so it says no change. Okay, there it goes. So the transition state to trunk. Right there. So it did transition. So DTP does work. Um... So we type in do show interface trunk. You'll see that here. Let me scroll up just a touch. You'll see that gig zero slash one at the very bottom of that the console output says desirable and it's negotiated 802.1q. And there we have it. So that's exactly what you'd want to see. So I actually had to turn on the negotiation aspect of it. So we type in do show interface uh, gig zero slash one switch port uh, interface gig zero slash. You'll see right here. Let me grab this real quick. Where it says that that negotiation of trunking is on. The trunking encapsulation is the administrative trunking encapsulation is negotiate, but the operational trunking encapsulation is dot one q. So basically, what we did is we at, we listened to whatever switch three stated and said, okay, well, you want me to become a trunk because on switch three side do show run interface gig one slash one you told me to um, become a trunk because of that even though on my side do show run interface gig zero slash one I am dynamic desirable I don't know what you want me to be I'm just gonna let you tell me what to do technically desirable will tell as well as uh, try to do it itself but in this particular case it works out just fine so um, pretty straightforward stuff for the most part 
And that's why I like running these events and these state messages so you guys can see how they would work. So you can see the actual transition that DTP does work. Um, I know I've said on some of the other courses I've produced that DTP, I don't believe it worked, but I've never really done the debug behind it. So we're in pretty good shape there. Beyond that, uh, the other one I want to touch on real quick is ISL. So ISL is going to be the same thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to interface gig 0 slash 3. I'm going to type a switch port trunk encapsulation is uh, negotiate. And the switch port mode is dynamic desirable because I wanted to try to negotiate DTP. All right, so if you type in do show interface trunk, do show interface trunk, you'll see that I am right here. I am trying to, okay, so it did form a, uh, a negotiate ISL already. So that's good because it'll run both, right? Um, it's negotiating ISL from gig 0 slash 3, which is a connection to, uh, that should be switch 4. And it is. So switch four, we go to switch four real quick, and do a show interface trunk. We should have a connection, it's auto, and it's a negotiated ISL trunking for native VLAN one on gig one slash one. We do a show CDP neighbors, gig one slash one points us towards switch five. So we type in show, C, uh, show Mac address table for VLAN, or let's do dynamic right now we've learned a lot of MAC addresses and they're all dynamic which is good so we're learning MAC addresses so um, let's go to switch six real quick and we're gonna say show MAC address table for VLAN 10 so we're learning one right here we are learning FA16 3E22 8A51. That's in VLAN 10. If we go back up to switch, uh, was it 3? No, 5. No, um, 4. Um, that's all VLAN 1. If we come up here and for VLAN 10, we don't have anything learned. The reason why we don't have anything learned is because of the fact that 6 isn't talking to four yet. They're not propagating information between them. So we have to get that fixed. That's why I'm staging you through and how to get this stuff, type of stuff set up. So um, getting the, uh, the setup here complete will be the important part. Now one of the last things I want to show you guys is how to do things in bulk configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Switch 3 to on all of its ports to just try to negotiate auto. So I'm going to say on Switch 3 I'm going to say that on all ports that are trunks, and I'm going to say exit interface range gig 0 slash 1 through 3, gig 1 slash 0 through 3, and gig 2 slash 0. So the switch port trunk encapsulation is going to be negotiate as well as the mode mode is going to be dynamic desirable okay this way here we'll be able to see the encapsulation so we type in do show interface trunk we have a bunch of connections to a bunch of other switches and they're all negotiating ISL so I'm going to take that same line of config or I'm saying that same syntax and I'm going to go to switch four and do the same thing. So I'm going to config T interface range gig zero slash one through three gig one slash zero through three and gig two slash zero switch port trunk and cap negotiate switch port trunk or switch port mode dynamic desirable. So I can literally take this syntax well not anymore. Um, well yeah no, not for everything. Um, so they're going to form that. So now if I go back to switch 4 and I type in do show Mac address table for dynamic or VLAN 10, eventually it'll learn it. Could be a span entry problem. Um, 
Oh, you know why? You show VLAN brief. He doesn't have the VLAN created, that's why. So we'll talk about VTP uh, coming up here in an, in an upcoming video, but this is how this stuff would break down. So uh, the reason why it's not is because there's no VLAN 10 created on Switch 4, so that's why it's not propagating the information. So we have that, and um, I'm going to go ahead and do that for all these ports for Switch 1 and Switch 2 and Switch 6, not to waste everybody's time. So that's going to be how you would go about doing that. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I want to thank you for viewing.